<laughs> Funny man, dude. <laughs> hey, everybody. Good morning to you. I am Randy Palmer, and this is my good friend over here, <laughs> Clifford Hunter. I'm working on this pointing thing, and we are so glad that you took time to join us today. I'm going to turn my telephone off so it doesn't ring in the middle of everything. All right. That you took time to join us today on this not so crazy talk. Uh, Clifford and I were here a week ago. Lord willing, we'll be back some more. Clifford, how are you this morning? I am doing well, Randy. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing good. I'm 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 alive and breathing, and and um, computers all work this morning. So yeah. All right. All yeah. right. All right. Simple, man. Hey, uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive right in, and just real quick though. Uh, Clifford Hunter, he is a radio personality at 107.9 Jams, and he's also the um, pastor at Heaven's Haven Church, and um, we'll put this up there later just so that you know you can catch him during the week at other locations. He and I uh, served together in Johnson County at one time as ministers at separate churches, but as ministers together in our community, and so we're here today to talk about um, what's going on in our world. We're talking about the struggle between um, us treating one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Clifford, for today's conversation, um, I, I want to phrase it like this. I thought about this the other day. And and um, when we were young, we'd go on trips and I was the map reader for the family. And so at some point, you know, dad's driving along and he's like, uh, <laughs> hey, people talk about, I want to go back to the good old days, dude. They don't know that back then we drove at night so that we didn't uh, we could let the windows down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We didn't have air conditioning. Okay, just something mm -hmm. to think about, people. And uh, <laughs> so we're driving along, you know, and he's like, "Okay, uh, how much further we got to go?" And I'll open up the glove compartment so I got a little light, you know, so I can read the map. And I'm going, I find where we started, all right, and I find where we're going. And then, okay, Daddy, what's the last city we went through? He'd tell me the last city we went to. What highway are we on? And then I begin to, you know, have the little numbers. That's how many miles. Mm -hmm. So All I would right. start naming off the miles. And he, man, he he could do it. He didn't need a calculator. And his head's going ding, 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 ding. And he goes, okay, we got another, you know, 275, 300 miles to go. And um, so we're like, all right, that's how much further we've got to go. That is the, um, the way I kind of see as um, where we are in this coming together, loving brothers loving each other's brothers and sisters, dealing with the issue of prejudice and racism that has been in our country. It is a journey that started way back when. Mm -hmm. um, and um, how much progress we have made, if any, depends on, uh, obviously, you know, your viewpoint. And um, in essence, we could, about, you and I could leave um, the same place. We could both leave Dublin going to Savannah and, we may get there at different times and, mm -hmm. and how fast we get there and how slow we get there will vary. And I think so many different conversations about where, so could you, from your perspective, where are we, man? Um, For me, Randy, I think we made significant progress uh, in what we're doing and I'm explaining because of okay. just where I've come from and what I've seen. Um, we at one point in time uh, during, and, and I'm not that old, uh, I was born in the 70s, but there was a different mindset uh, of exclusion in the 70s as compared to now. And I know some people say it's different, but it's the same. Uh, I think we've come a long way. Uh, in the 70s, uh, it might have been hard for uh, in, in Wrightsville, Georgia, for you and I to have such a significant relationship where we we went to do different things as churches together. Uh, so we made significant progress. Uh, it might have been hard for uh, you and I to go out and eat at the same place and just kind of enjoy and, and act like everything was normal. Uh, mm -hmm. And even then, even dating in couples, it might have been hard. Uh, but for us now, we have made some progress, I believe. Um, I think the thing is for me, though, just like you talked about in the trip, 
we have to understand where we are in the trip. We're not there yet. A lot of people are saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We got to be there. No, we're not there yet. And right. so we, we need to more so concentrate on where we're trying to go instead of saying we're there yet. We're, we're there. Right. And so there are times where now we need to just look at the truth about it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the only way, Rand, that we're going to get to where we need to be if we are all transparent. And as the Bible says, our yeses are yeses and our noes are noes. Mm -hmm. And we have to sit down and have conversations that sometimes are very uncomfortable uh, and really talk about these things that have occurred because it's the only way that, to me, we can get there if we promote healing. And to promote healing, we've got to talk about the things that have occurred. I'm right. going to give you this example. Um, if uh, I, I talked about this yesterday in church, uh, the paralyzed man laying on his bed of affliction and mm -hmm. then getting up and walk after Jesus, speaking and forgiving his sins. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, in the process of that, it was probably hard for him to get up. Uh, even though mentally it was hard for him to get up, he's late there so long. Right. Right. We have been steeped in this divide for so long that I'm going to be honest, it is hard to get up. Yeah. Mm. To get up from it. And so, you know, if we're going to ever get there uh, and move forward from where we are right now, there's some things that have to occur to help us to heal, to get there, to get up and walk together and do together. Uh huh. Uh, I, I agree with that. And um, that whole hard to get up thing, boy. I think I've had that conversation with you uh, mm -hmm. as I get older, man. It's like, Ooh, if I sit too long, it's, yeah. hard. but I, but I agree. I, I think that um, we, depending on how you look at it, have become comfortable. And, you know, sometimes it's like, um, Oh man, it's, you see it in a lot of things uh, from asking your kids to clean their room to what God is trying to do in our life. And well, God, I quit doing so-and-so, you know, I made right. I'm good. I made progress. But when, when he's wanting to go, come on, man, you know, I want to like, you kind of like talking, you're talking about the, by the pool. Um, I want you to get up and walk and enjoy life. And so, mm -hmm. so many times I think we're just content to, you know, if we can get up, okay, I'm up. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. and, and we kind of stop there. So mm -hmm. what, uh, what, what is it that we, you, you talked about healing and having conversations. What are some of the things we need to talk about? Um, for me, uh, Randy, is this, um, we, I think we, we have a broad picture of racism. I think we have a broad picture of America, mm -hmm. but I would like people to think more so of the small town of America, your okay. community, right. uh, people who are around you, the people mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's best to have hard conversations to heal where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, become a model, become the proof that God can work in your life to change things. So for me, uh, maybe I live here in Dublin and I've got friends. We need to have some hard conversations that that identify the things we're dealing with, because I may not know what you're going through. You may not, not know what what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. but have to, I'm going I'm to give you this example, Randy. All right. So I went over and I have been trying to find I like genealogy. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult to find uh, my people because of slavery. OK, mm -hmm. uh, so now I went over and finally found that my grandfather's grandfather is actually buried here in Lawrence County. Wow. And crossed the Creek Cemetery mm -hmm. okay, over by the water department in Dublin. And, and and I found, you know, that he migrated from the Washington County area mm -hmm. all the way down here to Dublin and and kind of found out some of his life and some of the things that they've gone through. Mm -hmm. he, uh, and, and and then in tying into that, he was born a slave. Mm. You know, when we have conversations about where our families have come from, mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to talk about those things and we need to kind of have an understanding of why we are how we are. Right. How our culture is how it is. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the big things. The second thing is uh, we have to have the, the, the conversation about opportunity. 
Okay. Um, it can be very difficult for us to understand why. For instance, sometimes we uh, will assume a person is why is where they are because it's their choice. They they've done this. They've done this. They put themselves in that position. It is not always the case, and so it is better. We had a conversation on the radio. Get to know me. Mm-hmm. Have a conversation with me to know why I am where I am Mm -hmm. and what I need to go forward. And I think that if we take a small town mentality and sit down and talk to each other about these conversations, Mm -hmm. I think it will begin a healing that will help us get past it. And sometimes, you know, we don't have to always speak when somebody is speaking. Uh, Randy, you may come and tell me all about your problems, but I don't have to say, well, Randy, let me tell you, you need to understand this. this. I just say, well, Randy, you know, I'm, I'm praying, brother. I don't know. I, I'm praying. I don't have to respond to what you say to help you. And I think this is an issue that we have. We, we want to come up with the right answer and the right thing. Let God do the healing. Let's just talk about it. And, and a lot of times in talking about it, we will come to our own understanding. Yes. Yes. Hey, Clifford, to affirm what you said there, um, you know, I think a lot about how that, you know, I'll I'll have something going on. And, um, you know, I've even like with my sister, we kind of have that. And I was talking and I have another friend who his wife and daughter, um, I forget, man, I wish I could remember. They got a a really funny term. Um, I don't know if it's like you want me to hold the whatever, Uh, but what it basically means is, you know, don't, don't say anything to me, just listen to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and my sister and I were kind of like that sometimes, you know, we'll start and she'll like, you know, no, I don't need you to, uh, counsel me or, you know, analyze me or my situation. Just listen to me. I'm like, okay, Joel, we'll, I'll be, I'll be kind. And then other times, man, she, and you know, I'll call them and just say, just don't. uh, there's a, a couple of things, um, Clifford, man, you talked about, starting as a community, starting where we are. And that is one of the things that uh, I I totally agree with that. Um, I know for me, um, engaging in a lot of the, this that's going on around us and people, you know, they're, they're, they're shouting or, or trying to have conversations with people they don't even know in the media over the internet and other places. And, um, man, I'm saying, look around you. There are people you work with, people you go to school with people that, uh, you go to church with that. Uh, we can have conversations with people that you eat in restaurants with uh, mm-hmm. that you can have conversations with on a daily basis. And another thing you touched on, man, a, a lot of times, you know, we look at somebody and we, and we say, Oh man, you know, why don't they get a job or, or why don't they so-and-so mm-hmm. and you do not know what that person has been through. And mm-hmm. I want to say something to people who are listening and who will listen for all of you who during COVID-19 and I realized I'm kind of, and you felt depressed and you felt isolated and you felt, Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? And this, mm-hmm. all these things going on. Don't forget what that felt like, because there are people mm-hmm. who every day go through that, not because of something they did. You went through it because not because of something we did because of COVID-19. There are a lot of people that are in that same situation. I think it's the same as when we're talking about, and this healing between the races, there's a lot of people, man, they are in situations, um, not because of something that they have done, but because of something that, you know, they experienced, it could have been a sickness or illness. It Mm -hmm. could have been some, some, the loss of a job, you know, everybody's not where they are because they don't want to get out and work. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are some people in that case, and there's people, there, there are people in society that of, of all of these things, um, John Maxwell talked to, and I can't remember the exact quote, but he was talking about it, that uh, people changing, you know, and some people, people thought, well, people don't want to change. People got to have the right motivation to change. I think it's part of, it. I'll, you know, and he thought about people have to believe that there is hope they can change and that they mm-hmm. have, and, and that hope is an opportunity to change. I mean, it's, do you know me? Um, I like to eat. One of my struggles is always trying to be in, you know, keep a certain weight. And for a while, man, when I felt like I could not, you know, I was, mm-hmm. that was depressing. But when I found out that, oh, you know what? If I do this and I do that and I can make this happen, then I can begin to um, change right. my physical stature. Dude, I had hope. 
And mm-hmm. and then and I and I begin to do things from then on. If I don't, it's on me. Mm-hmm. I just want to say that and say, man, I totally that you got to have a so you say it in conversations mm-hmm. in our small communities. Mm-hmm. What else? Anything else that you would add to 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 the, what you just shared with me? Um, I am afraid that the church is taking a back seat uh, to these discussions, which leads to. And I don't want to I want to say this wrong, but it leads to times where things may get out of hand. OK, um, I believe that our churches, we have the church is the stability of the community. Uh, I believe that we are mandated as churches to try to find a resolve in our communities and not stand still. So I want to encourage pastors, leaders who are like minded to come together and begin a conversation. Uh, and, And honestly, if we're honest about it, Randy, leaders, ministers, deacons, uh, ministry heads, they need to have a conversation as well. Yeah. Uh, because Sundays are really a segregated time, uh, if we're honest about it. In order to promote healing, I'm not saying you need to go to somebody's church all the time, but just like we've done before, you know, you and I, just some type of fellowship during the year, maybe once a year, some kind of fellowship that will help to heal your community. Mm -hmm. Church provides an awesome experience where God is in the house Mm -hmm. and God can help us to heal from our problems versus us being in other places and have emotionally charged conversation that leads to different other things. We can have emotional conversations, but God can be in the midst and Mm -hmm. help us to heal. And so I think that as leaders and as church people, we are mandated to be at peace with all men and women. And we really need to come to an understanding that it's going to take us getting out of our comfort zone and promoting the healing of our communities. I believe, you know, when we talk about COVID, there's some good that's coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. We're able to fellowship more together, Mm -hmm. have an understanding together to go to each other's churches Mm -hmm. uh, virtually and to understand we're not so different. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this is a part, even in COVID, we're getting some healing because we're worshiping together. And I I need for that to continue and leaders to reach out to one another and try to promote it. Amen. 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 Clifford, I want to uh, repeat what you said there, um, because people often say that Sunday is the most segregated. You said it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to. All right. What you said we're saying is that we do need to come together and we do need to worship together. It's not going to happen every Sunday. I mean, you think about Mm -hmm. it. um, It doesn't happen either way. You got styles of worship and theological differences and you got Mm -hmm. geographical distances, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I liken it to a family reunion, man, somewhere along the, we can't see our family every day as much as we'd like to somewhere Mm -hmm. along the line. We got to come together. You know, we come together at least once a year and, Mm -hmm. uh, and I loved it where you said ha- there's a difference in having this conversation out there, but then having that conversation, man, we're in worship together. And so um, for our sake of time, what we're going to transition to is that we've been talking for those of you who are just joining us or um, we've been talking about how far along have we come in this journey and how much further we have to go. What can we do? Clifford, you talked about starting in a small communities where we are, within our churches, the need for church leaders to come together. And I would like to say, some people go, well, that's hogwash, that will not work. Um, Rod Serling, what he used to say, I would like to present to you. And that, and then that little topic, I would like <laughs> to do y'all something here. Uh, and yeah. that is this, I wanna just kind of quickly tell a little story. Don't let me forget to tell the rib story. Okay. Clifford and I both grew up um, in Johnson County in Riceville, Georgia. And for those of you who do not know that area, look it up. Um, It's down in South Georgia. They have some famous residents who've come from there. But growing up, as Clifford alluded to earlier, um, there was, yeah, it was there. The the prejudice and things, it was obvious. I can remember the three restrooms. I can uh, remember a lot of other things, you know, and um, 
I left, moved away, and I came back. In that county and in that place now, I was so amazed um, to find that there was a thing called the Johnson County Crusade where the churches, all the churches came together and they worshiped together. And it was just a beautiful sight. Out of the Johnson County Crusade, um, man, there were opportunities for us where we, and in the Johnson County Crusade, uh, we went to the different congregations. We had different people who spoke. There were, and I want to say good morning to one of my classmates, Kathleen Floyd, who I see just popped on. Um, we worshiped together. Uh, I had the opportunity to come and to speak it with to your church and your congregation. Y'all let me sing mm -hmm. in the choir. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we had not just the Johnson County Crusade. Out of that, friendships developed. Um, from that other things about when we, 4th of July was a big thing in Johnson County. We would have services together. And I know in our, some of our services, we had the kids choir. I also know in some of the, um, some of the, uh, crusades, but like we went to the one church and, uh, the congregation, people from all the walks of Johnson County. And here was, a a man of color up in the pulpit speaking to all of us, which is great and fantastic. But some mm -hmm. of the members whose pigment is the same as mine were like, man, wow, I don't think I've ever seen someone of color in this church, you know? <laughs> and they were just, they were flabbergasted, they were flabbergasted in a good way. They were like, yes, you know, it was great. And um, in Martin Luther King's um, speech, I have a dream, you know, he talks about it and can, can you quote a little part about one day in Alabama or I can't quote it specifically? Well, basically he was saying one day little black girls and little white boys and little white boys and little white girls will walk down the street hand in hand. Um, and that's what really we're talking about to the point that we're together, you yeah. know, we're walking together. And, and that's basically what he was meaning. The premise of we're together at some point in time in America, we would be together. And I wish people could have been there. It goes back to the small community. You know, mm -hmm. you doing what you can do in your community. Mm -hmm. On that stage, the kids singing, man, you could feel God moving. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what brings us together. And, and when you when that goes on, um, it, it changes how you see people. And yes. uh, it's the same. I can be mad with my with one of my siblings and I start praying. And it changes, you know, I begin, God began to talk to me about me. <laughs> hey, Randy, look in the mirror. And it changes. And just because I keep referring to my siblings, that doesn't mean I don't like my siblings. I'm just trying to, um, trying to make it applicable to everybody. And I don't want to call other people's names. <laughs> right. I don't want to slip and go, well, I was mad with Marty Thompson. I mean, no, um, I love Marty Thompson. Okay. But, uh, That's true. Um, so, yeah, Clifford, uh, my point is, I think, man, we called a glimpse you mentioned the cemetery that your great was it grandfather, great grandfather. It's my grandfather's, uh, my grandfather's grandfather. Okay, your so grandfather's we're grandfather. Talking about my great great grandfather, great great, yeah, great great grandfather. That made me think of something else. Johnson County, yeah, Johnson County's not perfect. Yes, are there people there who, yeah, but I tell you what, the four Joko. The youth organization right. is going on. Man, they are still coming together, making a difference. Did you by chance see where they all, a group got together and went out and worked on the cemetery uh, out there where um, I know Coach Dixon and them had gone out there? Mm -hmm. Did you see that? I think I did. I get their newsletter. So I think I saw that in the newsletter. For people who don't understand it, there was a cemetery, uh, just like in a country, you know how it is. There's a lot of cemeteries that get covered up, but this was an African-American cemetery that had gotten covered up and, and one thing or another. And I can't really remember what led to what was the, the catalyst for this, but on a, a day, man, people got out there, young, old, black, white, brown, you name it. And they went to work and they began to uncover, you know, uh, and clean out the cemetery. I mean, trees were pulled down, all kind of things. And it was, again, to me, just uh, a view of God's people at work together as a community. And um, it's just a beautiful thing. Um, so, Clifford, if you had to wrap it up, 
what we've talked about and just like a few words or a couple of statements, what would you, what would you say to people? Cause we're going to transition to, to something else real quick. In just a minute. Okay. All right. So for me, uh, just like you talked about Joko for Joko and we're talking about Johnson County crusade. A lot of people say it's impossible for these things to happen with God. All things are possible. Amen. We saw this with the crusade, how we came together. We would go eat together. Uh, we would meet always together. Uh, and Randy, you and I from this, our friendship is still, we call each other. And it's just like we talked to each other the other day. Uh, if it wasn't for Joko Crusade, Johnson County Crusade, that wouldn't have ever happen. Right. So we can build friendships. We can build relationships. We can tie to one another regardless of color or anything. With God, all things are possible. Who would have thought that Wrightsville, Georgia, a place of a, a good bit of racism, Oh, yeah. would have people who had a like mind to come together and do great things could achieve such great things in that area. Amen. Amen. And praise God for that. Uh, yes, it was God and uh, James Williams and all those others, uh, man. Who, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, and there's some names, man, are slipping me. I, I knew I shouldn't even call his name because I wanted to start calling names, but uh, to Melinda and all the others who, who helped make that possible. Right. That is so wonderful. Um, for those of you just kind of tuning in, I'm Randy Palmer a good friend, Clifford Hunter. Um, Clifford, for those of you who do not know it, uh, he is the pastor at Heaven's Haven Church, and uh, he is also a radio personality. I like how you put that on there, radio personality. No, I'm, I'm, you know, 107.9 Jams is, is where you can find him on the radio. You can find that online discussing hard topics, hard questions. Uh, you may get your toes stepped on, uh, but go ahead, uh, go check him out. Heaven's Haven, again, that is the, the church that the uh, pastors, you can see him online, um, hear him teaching the word of God, hear him preaching. And I know it's been an encouragement, inspiration, and a challenge to me. I would like to also say thank you to uh, those who have contributed to make this possible. Uh, people like Paul and Joy Moore, David Miller, uh, James Katrina Hanley, David Johnson, others who contributed financially that make all this happen. If you would like to know how you can contribute financially or become a part of the prayer team, you can go to randyparmer.com and it'll give you all that information there. Um, I just encourage people, man, like, you know, I see all these names, people commenting and I think, wow, if every one of these people will let God use them where they are, um, that man, what a difference it can be. I'm going to mm -hmm. close on a non-serious note. Um, if that's okay with everybody, I'm going to tell y'all the rib story I promised last time. So Clifford um, had this wonderful idea to invite me to be a judge uh, at a, a a rib contest. Mm -hmm. and, oh, you know me, you know I love food. I'm like, yes, Clifford, let me pray about it. Okay, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, beautiful scene. And so if you've never judged a rib contest, I mean, this, this is really cool. They did a fantastic job. All the judges were sitting at this table. Um, you have, you know, things to clean your hands. You had the little um, sorbet to cleanse your palate after eating a rib and all of those things. Awesome branding. I don't know if you ever had that opportunity to be there, but man, it was wonderful. So here we are. And, you know, uh, as I thought about that, Clifford, man, even there, we had people of color. Mm -hmm. When I say color, I mean colors, you know, mm -hmm. pigmentation. We had law enforcement. Yes. Uh, all this together and we're sitting here, but here's what was funny to me. I made Clifford laugh and I told it to him. So maybe it'll make you laugh. So we, they come and what they'll do is they'll bring a, a, the rib to you. And, and part of the thing you judge is presentation. And those do um, people, man, this, it was excellent. I mean, great presentation, all this thing. So we, the, the deal was, was that we were supposed to kind of like take a bite of a rib mm, and you put it back down and then you judge the rib. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what most judges, you know, they take a bite. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. All right. Then put set that rib aside, cleanse their palate with a sorbet. I'm like, forget that. I am a single man. This rib is good. And while, while they're over there, I'm like, well, how many, I'm trying to see how many bites I can get in off of this rib before the next one comes, man. I'm like, I can judge. I, you know, I can cleanse my palate and get to the next rib. So I'm down now. And we were done, man. I'm like, I bagged all that stuff up, all the ribs I had left, you know. I mean, after I tested them, uh, there was some still had meat on them. So put them in the go thing. So I'm driving down the road back out there to 
to Mount Olive, man. I'm eat, finishing up those ribs. You know, had to win it down. Eat a little bit of all I can get all that rib, throw it out the window. So uh, that's the way you, that's the way I judge ribs. Um, and Cliff, <laughs> I appreciate that. It's a it's a wonderful um, part of my life. And, and y'all, to me, that's an example of what we can do, uh, what you can do. Each one of you that watch this, uh, do what Clifford suggested. Look around you. I saw some of the names on here. Kathleen Floyd, I saw your name. And I pray for your sons and your daughters uh, of all the people on here. Donna Garnto, I saw you and Austin Brownie and Esteline and others. Uh, Rebecca, you. Never underestimate what God can do through you. In all cases, you've been obedient and willing to God. Clifford, would you close us in prayer, man? I sure will. Lord, we pray to you now, knowing you are still our God and all things are possible with you. And Lord, you said that you can do exceedingly abundantly all that we can ask or think. Yes. And God, I'm asking that, Lord, you will begin to tear down the imaginations of the vision, the strongholds of dissension, the strongholds of racism, the strongholds of inequality. And Lord, you will place into the minds of all listeners and people of the world, your word and how God that you are able to do all things but fail. Lord, we are praying and many don't believe that we can ever come together. But today, Lord, I know if you're in charge, you can bring all men and women together through your spirit. Let your spirit be our guides as we speak, God, our mouth, God, our tongue, God, our minds, that we may speak healing instead of hurt. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Clifford. Man, I love you. Uh, All right. Thank you, man. Have a great day. I know you got a lot of work to do. One, sometime we want to talk to people about the business. I mean, there's a lot we got to talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, everybody, God be with y'all today. We'll see y'all next time. All right. Take care, Randy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.